This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. A story of resilience in life and business. Mary Fico talks about how she survived cancer and how she's keeping her business afloat during the pandemic. Hello everyone, I'm Ken Kara. Thank you for your time today and here's your local information. Everything is a little different this year. In fact, the only thing that's really been constant is hearing how things are a little different this year. With the holidays coming up, some local businesses are getting creative to help their customers get gifts. Jean Lassant has the story. Joining us now on SSP TV News, we have Mary Fico, and she is here to talk about some direct sales businesses that have been happening through COVID. We have to talk about how we're getting original with keeping ourselves alive in business. So Mary, thank you for joining us here on the program. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Very good. Very good. So first, a little bit about your background as a mom, as a cancer mm -hmm. survivor, and as a business yeah. owner. Yes. Yes. So, you know, I'm fortunate to, I'm a five-year breast cancer survivor and, you know, going through that early in life at age 45 just took, you know, stops your life, you know, um, with little kids and, um, but got through it and happy, blessed to be here. I um, started my own business, you know, uh, after going through all of that and wanting a way to stay at home. So fortunately, I was able to do that through New Skin and um, created a um, online business selling, you know, premier um, skincare products and love it. Just absolutely love it. Never thought I would, but I do. I love so it. So you recently formed a group, uh, which I love to see the support of staying local. And when we say local, we mean supporting local businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a group. Uh, that is formed and it gained momentum where people could go on to the group and what do they do? So they can shop for, with all different friends. So I have about 11 or 12 friends that also have their own businesses through many different, you know, um, direct sales companies. And we decided, I decided to create a group where our friends could shop from each other, you know, each other's friends. And there's many different um, representatives in there from Pampered Chef to Norwex to um, the Lula Rue, you know, <laughs> all the different, you see them all over, but we decided to all come together and I created this group of friends. Nobody had to pay anything. We just supported each other and invited all of our friends and, you know, it's a great way to buy for yourself, treat yourself, or um, buy gifts for your friends and family. And at the same time, you're supporting your friends and their businesses. And it's been, it's taken off. It's, we're having a lot of fun in the group with some games. It's not just all selling, you know, it's just a lot of fun. And I think it's what people really enjoy doing, helping each other and having fun and getting some great products at the same time. What have you found uh, throughout your career? You said you've been doing this for two years. What are the biggest challenges that you face as a person who owns a business with direct sales? So I think direct sales have always had a bad rap. And, you know, you go back to the 80s. I'll date myself. But they've always had a bad rap. And the products, like, it's just not like that anymore. They're usually people like me, like moms trying to do things on the side to bring some income into their homes and take care of their kids. And at the same time, and I just, you know, that, that people are starting to realize like, Hey, I could do that too. And be home with my kids. Or even if I work full time, I can do it on the side and have some extra money for whatever reason, if you want to save for something big. And it's starting to build momentum. And I actually was a little skeptical when I first started. And I, is the best decision I ever did is to do, you know, some direct sales with a good, reputable company. And most people are starting to see that. So I would recommend it to any, any mom looking for a way to make some extra money. What is something that you've learned in business through this year with dealing with COVID-19? I have learned, number one, 
that to always count your blessings, right? Um, there are people that, well, as a cancer survivor, I've learned that, and my husband went through cancer this year as well. So we've been touched by some stuff that's tough, right? Um, but I've learned that people really do care. Like people do, like it's, even if we're isolated, we still connect, we find ways to connect, and we make a difference with each other. What is the Facebook page that people can go to to support the local friends? So our page is Holiday Shopping with Friends. Um, they can, if they find me on Facebook, it's Mary Doc, um, D-O-C, and then I'll get you to the page as well. So absolutely, jump in our page. We love it. We would love to have you. Very good. Happy <laughs> shopping. Mary, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, God bless you and your family this holiday season. Thank you. Thanks so much, Janine. Take care. Today's news feature is brought to you by Falvello Law Firm. Have you been injured in a car accident? Call Falvello Law Firm. Your case is our fight. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. Will we be singing the Thanksgiving song in the rain? Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service. On Tuesday, it's mostly sunny with a high of only 37 degrees. Tuesday night, mostly cloudy with a low of 30. Then on Wednesday, we're back up in the mid-40s with a 30% chance of rain after 1 p.m. at mostly cloudy skies. Wednesday night, a 60% chance of rain, mainly before 1 a.m., mostly cloudy with a low of 42 degrees. And then on Thanksgiving Day, a 30% chance of showers before 1 p.m., partly sunny with a high of 52. Thursday night, partly cloudy with a low of 38 degrees. Friday is partly sunny with a high of 50 and Friday night mostly cloudy with a low of 38 degrees. The Marion Catholic Girls Volleyball 2020 season took them all the way to the PIAA Single A State Championship. The Phillies lost to Clarion area to finish second in the state. Marion senior Tatiana Zeleniak tells the standard speaker the team left it all out on the court and played their hearts out. Her teammate and classmate Olivia Karchner says going from not knowing if they were going to have a season to the state championship is really incredible. Congratulations to the Phillies on a great season and we hope to have more with the Marion Girls Volleyball team soon here on SSP TV News. A lot of local athletes are heading to Division I colleges to continue their athletic careers. Learn about some of them a little later. Next, we have a clip from our show I Care Today in the SSP TV Spotlight, and our JC Jimenez answers the question many of us are asking this holiday season, should we get the new Xbox or PlayStation? We'll be right back. The Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce will be having a women's luncheon on Tuesday, November 24th from 12 noon until 1 p.m. at the Pines in downtown Hazleton. The guest speaker for the event will be Deb Conway from Penn State Hazleton. You are asked to register in advance at hazeltonchamber.org or by calling 570-455-1509. The City of Hazleton will be having their annual City Hall tree lighting ceremony on Sunday, November 29th with the event starting at 5 p.m. SBTV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Charles W. Charlie Tucky of Hazleton, the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home, will announce their arrangements. Anne Marie Walker, age 88, of Hazleton. Mass will be held on Wednesday at 10 a.m. at Most Precious Blood Church. The Fiero Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.